Kwanza ni shukuru bishop na mam sana. Manake ni watu ambao wamenilea bwana Yesu apee sifa. There is always somebody you look to. Praise the name of Jesus. Na najua kwamba hata jinsi ambavyo nimeweza kusimama ni sababu tunatazama watu na tunaona vile walivyo and we admire what they have. So thank you so much for this opportunity ambao mmenipatia kuwa hapa kuweza kuhubiri. Thank you for the trust bishop. I know it is a big trust. I know it in the name of Jesus. Let me just make a bit of correction. I am under Pastor George Matthew Pale Kiambu to Kokanisa and it was Eagles Faith Christian Center. I, I, I do my ministry under a pastor called Pastor George Matthew, a man I respect uh, with all my heart because uh, he's a man who has given me the opportunity to be able to serve and even grow my gifting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Na ngependa kuingia direct uh, to the word of God. All protocols observed lead us to this ministry. We love you so much. Thank you for being a great support even to uh, Bishop and mom, let me tell you, being in ministry, yo miaka nimekuwa katika ministry, now I appreciate ministry supporters. Bwana Yesu wa Pesifa. Let me tell you, a visionary carries a very heavy load. Mtu ambaye anabeba vision ya Mungu, ni msigo sana. So wanapopata watu ambao wanamsaidia, inamsaidia sana. So thank you to the leadership that are supporting uh dad and mom in this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus I thank God for this opportunity I'm passionate about souls I love winning souls for this festival napenda sana kufikia kutafuta kukimbiza nafsi za binadamu I love it and today I'm going to be preaching about that actually today I'm preaching on the passion of Christ hallelujah ambia jirani yako the passion of Christ tunifungue hii uh, nini ya okay amen nitakuwa nikizungumza juu ya the passion of christ bwana yesu apee sifa na i'd like to just pray for the word everlasting father we thank you we bless you we worship you and we honor you oh god i thank you father for the opportunity ya kuweza kusimama hapa na kuhubiri neno lako nikijua kwamba baba mimi ni chombo use me to touch the lives of your people use me to change their lives oh god use me to stir up a passion in them that they may pursue the lost in the name of jesus i give myself to you nitumie baba na ni katika jina likula yesu tumeomba na kuamini Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Nataka kuzungumza juu ya the passion of Christ. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Maana kuna kitu kilivutia Kristo aende pale msalabani. Haleluya. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Nataka uelewa ya kwamba kile kilimfanya Kristo apitie machungu pale msalabani. Hata iko ile msumari ambao ilipigiliwa. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. That was in the pain in the heart of Jesus when he was being crucified. Sio ile sio zile mipigwa alipigwa pale katika mgongo wake it wasn't the lashes that he was beaten that caused the pain the bible says in the book of hebrews chapter 12 verse 3 neno la mungu linasema ya kwamba he despised yani alidharau aibu ya msalaba he despised the shame of the cross inamaanisha kwamba hiyo sio ile ilikuwa inafanya awe na huzuni pale katika shamba ya getsemane what was causing jesus to moan and groan in pain Alipoangalia pale Lazarus akienda kumfufua, nini ilifanya Yesu alie? The Bible says Jesus wept. What caused Jesus to weep? Nini ilifanya Kristo alie? Is his passion. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Ni ile takwa lilikuwa katika mwili, katika roho yake. There was a desire that was in his heart. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. The Bible says that the nations are the inheritance of Jesus. Ya kwamba mataifa na nikizungumza juu ya taifa sizungumzi juu ya earth I'm talking about the man and the woman next to you they are the passion of Jesus Bwana Yesu apewe sifa mataifa the bible says Mungu Baba anaambia mwana the father is telling Jesus ask of me and I will give you the nations yani niulize mimi na nitakupatia mataifa kama urithi wako the nations are the inheritance of Jesus that is why he died That is where his passion is. Yaani takwa lake ni mataifa. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa. The Bible says he despised yani alidharau aibu ya msalaba. Haleluya. Walipomsulubu bila nguo, alidharau. He did not consider it. The Bible says aliangalia pale alikuwa anaenda. He looked at the crown. He looked at the reward. What was the reward? Nini hiyo Yesu alikuwa anapata? Ni mimi na wewe. We are the inheritance of Jesus. Sisi ndio urithi. My God, Jesus didn't die for the buildings. He didn't die for the big cars. 
As much as we like the big cars. He didn't die for the big cars. The Bible says he came to seek and save that which was lost. Ya kwamba alikuja kutafuta nafsi ambazo zilikuwa zimepotea. Na ni mimi na wewe tulikuwa tumepotea. We were the ones who were lost. So we are the passion. Sisi ndio the desire, eh? The passion in Jesus. We are the passion. Hiyo ndio ilifanya avumilie uchungu. Hiyo ndio ilifanya avumilie aibu. We are the passion of Jesus. You and me. Bwana Yesu apesifa. Please allow me to read the book of John. Chapter 1 verse 10. I'm still at the passion even before I go to preaching on the lost. John chapter 1 verse 10 the Bible says Yohana sura ya kwanza mstari wa 10 ni kubalishi nitome kwa kizungu ta tafsiri kwa Kiswahili the Bible says he was in the world and the world was made through him but the world did not recognize him Ya kwamba alikuja duniani na dunia ilitengenezwa kutokana na yeye lakini dunia haikumjua na azungumzi sizungumzi juu ya mawe na miti na zungumza juu ya binadamu ya kwamba Yesu alikuja kwa binadamu na aliumba binadamu that all things were created by him Bwana Yesu apea sifa lakini hawakumjua Hiyo ndio uchungu ilikuwa katika roho ya Kristo That was the pain that was in the heart of Jesus when he was being crucified Bwana Yesu apea sifa maana ke binadamu aliumbiwa Mungu You were created for God. The Bible says, "Uliumba uwe na uhusiano na Mungu." I can picture God. Anapoumba binadamu pale katika shamba la Edeni, I picture God. Amaumba binadamu the Bible says, alipoumba kila kitu alikiumba sawa. Lakini alipofika kuumba binadamu, neno la Mungu linasema kwamba he created man in his image and in his likeness. Yaani akaumba binadamu na sura na umbile lake. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. And the Bible says alikuwa na shuka in the cool of the day awe na uhusiano na Mungu that he may rel- I mean awe na uhusiano na binadamu that he may relate with man Hallelujah Alafu hebu sikie hilo neno ya kwamba huu Yesu Kristo ambaye ni Mungu amechukua hali ya mwili na damu ameshuka amekuja duniani lakini wale wali aliumba hata hawamjui Isn't that the life of a man these days Sio ndio maisha ya binadamu We live our life. Tunaishi maisha yetu. Tunahangaika shughuli zetu. Lakini ile sababu tuliumbiwa tunaisha hao. God created you for fellowship. Ungesikia aje ukawa na mtoto ambaye ulilea na hakupigi simu. Hakujuli hali. Hata hataki kujua kama uko sawa, hataki kujua kama uko hai. Bwana Yesu apee sifa. Ungesikia aje put yourself in the shoes of God. When you put yourself in the shoes of God, you will know why we pursue souls with all our hearts. Yaani ukieka, ukijenga katika miguu ya Kristo utajua kwa nini? Alidharau kila kitu. Bwana Yesu apea sifa. He knew he would undergo shame. He knew he would undergo pain. Alijua kwamba atapitia machungu. Alijua kwamba ataibishwa. He knew. Ilikuwa inafika pale, anaambia wafuasi wake, I will be flogged. I will be handed over to the hands of of the soldiers and I will that he knew he confessed hallelujah lakini ni ilifanya ashikilie pale nini ilifanya ashikilie it is because you are made for god hallelujah uliumbiwa mungu na shida ya binadamu ni hii we always look for solutions apart from god hata sisi ambao tumewaokoka ni ukweli yani kila wakati tunatafuta suluhisho isipokuwa mungu katika maisha tunasukuma maisha tunasukuma maisha we forget that all things were created by him all things were created for him kile kitu kiliumba kutokana na yeye Romans 11:36 can we read that please wa Romi sura ya 11 mstari wa 36 hallelujah the bible says for of him and through him and to him are all things all things yani kila kitu kila kitu ni kwake kila kitu ni yake na kila kitu ni kutokana na yeye all things to him be the glory 
forever and ever. Tunatafuta suluhisho zetu everywhere apart from God. And we forget that he upholds the world with the power of his word. Yeni mishikilia dunia yote kutoka na maneno yake. He is the alpha and omega. I like what the psalmist said. Psalmist alisema ya kwamba promotion doesn't come from the north or the south. Yaani kuinuliwa kutoka kaskazini ama kusini ama mashariki it comes from God. Bwana Yesu apesifa. So the passion of Christ is rescuing man. Yaani lile takwa ambalo lilikuwa katika roho ya Mungu ilikuwa akomboe binadamu. You are the passion of Christ. Ile uchungu alipitia sio zile mishumari alipigiliwa. Sio mipigo ambayo alipigwa ile uchungu alipitia ni ya kwamba binadamu anaweza akamkataa binadamu anaweza akakosa kumjua that he came to the world and the world could not recognize him hiyo ndio ilikuwa uchungu iliyokuwa katika roho ya Mungu haleluya praise the name of Jesus the lost are at the center of God's heart wale ambao hawamjui Mungu wale ambao wamepotea tunawaita wale ambao wamepotea hata mimi nilikuwa hapo hao ndio wako katika roho ya Mungu they are at the center of the heart of God if you don't believe me let's read the book of Luke chapter 15 Luka 15 mstari wa 4 the bible says i'll read it in english na tafsiri kwa kiswahili what man of you having a hundred sheep if he loses one of them does he not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after that one which is lost until he finds it then he says i said to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents yani lile jambo ambalo linafanya bingu isimame na iwe na sherehe kile kinafanya mungu roho yake iruke na afurahie ni anapoona ya kwamba kuna mmoja ambaye amerudi katika ufalme wake just one is able to stop the business in heaven and cause there to be a celebration nafsi moja tu ikimrudia Mungu I tell you there is celebration in heaven you should see the angels rejoicing bona so basifa that is how much god loves people hallelujah and if i preach too loudly mimi ni evangelist the voice tends to come out hallelujah So nafsi moja ikija katika ufalme kuna shangwe mbinguni that shows you how much soul winning is in the heart of god hebu jiulize swali huyo jirani mnaishi na yeye anamjua mungu and god waits for you wewe ndio mwili ya mungu wewe ndio mikono yake wewe ndio mdomo anakugojea uongeleshe huyo getman anakufungulianga Mungu anagojea kila siku. Auaka kai hii ni yako muadedia. Will he talk to him today? That that person may know that I love them and that I have an inheritance of set for him. Ask. Tutazidi kuona. Let me just go step by step. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. So before the eyes of God. And please listen to me. Because I want to understand. I want you to understand why does God send us? Bona Mungu anatutuma haleluya. Bona Yesu apea sifa. Before the eyes of God the lost are lost. Unajua mara mingi tunaangalianga kitabia pengine anafanya vitu ambazo hazikufurahishi. By the way that's their nature. The nature of a man who is not born again is sin. So he will do sin. Bona Yesu apea sifa. Don't be shocked. Oh yes. That's what the Bible says. Waromi sura sita inasema ya kwamba yule ambaye hajabadilishwa yule ambaye bado akomebeba hali ya dhambi ni kawaida yake kutenda dhambi lakini sisi wenye haki ni kawaida yetu kufanya wema Bwana Yesu apea sifa but i want you to see a different picture because when god sees somebody who is not born again he sees something very different Bwana Yesu apea sifa yule ambaye hajamkubali Kristo ametengwa na Mungu milele Ambia jirani yako ametengwa milele. It is that serious. Unajua kuna mtu nikihubiri alikuja akaniambia pasta, kama Mungu anapenda binadamu, vile unasema siokoe binadamu yote. Why can't he save the whole world if he loves the whole world? Na mimi nikujibu nikwambia kwamba by the Mungu anapenda dunia yote, binadamu yote, na ana lengo la kuokoa yote. That's why he sends us. But there is something God cannot change unless you allow him to change it. 
Neno la Mungu linasema hivi, ya kwamba binadamu alipoanguka katika thambi, alichukua hali mpya. Inaitwa hali ya dhambi. Inaitwa hali ya kifo. The Bible says he took the form of Satan. Kuna wakati Yesu alikuwa anaongea na Wafarisayo. Na akawaambia, you are of your father the devil. Hakuwa na watusi. Sababu binadamu alipoanguka katika thambi, alichukua ile hali ya thambi. He died spiritually. Yaani alikufa kiroho. Na yule ambaye amekufa kiroho, hako kwa reda ya Mungu. When we say you are eternally separated from God, it means wewe na Mungu hakuna wakati mtapatana. Hakuna. So God will chase you up to your grave. Mungu atakukimbisha mpaka wakati wa kaburi yako. Akikwambia because God knows the day he loses you in death is over. Ile siku unafunga macho na unaingia katika milele. Hamtapatana. Because yote ambaye hajatakaswa na damu ya Kristo hajabadilisha undani wake amechukua hali ya kifo cha milele this thing is not a joke the bible says in the book of ezekiel chapter 18 verse 23 this is the lord speaking do i have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die says the lord god and not that he should turn from his ways and live yani nafurahishwa na kifo cha mwenye dhambi Mungu analia katika kifo cha mwenye dhambi. God cries over the death of a sinner. Bwana Yesu apasifa. The Bible says the opposite. Ya kwamba anafurahishwa na kifo cha mwenye haki. Maana yake anajua huyo mwenye haki anakuja wapi? Anakuja mbinguni. Lakini mwenye dhambi kifo chake ni kutengwa na Mungu milele. Wewe ni mwana wa Mungu. Uliumbwa ukiwa mwana wa Mungu. You are created as a son of God. Sasa kutengwa na Mungu milele inamaanisha kwamba Mungu hatawahi kuona tena and that is why there is a cry in the heart of God. Nakumbuka siku moja nilikuwa nahubiri pale madhare. And I got a prompting nikasikia tu ah, niongeleshe huyu jamaa. Alikuwa anapita. Nikasikia tu nimuongeleshe. I knew the prompting was from God. Nilikuwa naelewa ya kwamba ni Mungu ananiambia nimuongeleshe nimwambie juu ya wema wa Mungu. Lakini nikaipuuza Alipopita hivi nikasikia roho wa Mungu amenyuliza swali akanyuliza is there ever a second chance? Bwana Yesu apee sifa. Yaani kuna wakati utapata nafasi nyingine nimuongeleshe nimwambie juu ya wema wa Mungu. Praise the name of Jesus. Maana ke Mungu anaelewa pale anaelekea. Maybe he did not even have another day to live. And that is why the Lord was prompting me to talk to him. I pray for the church that we would catch the heart of God. Yaani mimi naomba kwamba kama kanisa tushike roho ya Mungu. The Bible says about the early church, kanisa ya Mwanza baada ya Kristo kupaa mbinguni. They understood what was happening. Walielewa nini inatendeka? Walielewa injili ni nini? The Bible says they supported it with all their hearts and God added to their numbers daily. Bwana Yesu apesifa. Hii kazi ya kushinda nafsi sio ya bishop tu na the pastor. Ni yetu sisi zote because God has need of every human being in the face of the earth. Yaani Mungu ana haja na kila binadamu aliye duniani na kuna wale utaweza kufikia na kuna wale bishop ataweza kufikia my god hallelujah god added to their numbers daily bishop can you imagine that even the churches cannot contain if we take our place in soul winning kanisa zitaweza if god adds to our numbers daily my god hey hey praise the mighty name of jesus let me not go ahead of myself bonus wa pesifa i'm building a case the state of the unborn again man yani yule ambaye hamjui Kristo akoaje la kwanza nimesema ya kwamba ametengwa na Mungu milele he is separated from god forever separated from god that is how bad it is so for your sister and your brother ambaye hajaokoka hatuokoki ili tufurahishe hatuokoki ili tusemange ah nimeokoka hatuokoki ili tufurahishe watu my god this thing is a matter of life and death Bwana Yesu ape sifa. Kuna moja ako na uhai, kuna moja hana. Haleluya. So yule ambaye amjui Kristo ametengwa na Mungu na ametengwa milele. Usipoenda kumpokonya kutoka kifo, umlete kwa uhai, huyu amepotelea. Ila wakati atafunga macho katika kifo, yake imeishia. Bwana Yesu ape sifa. The state of the man who is not born again. Yule ambaye hajazaliwa tena, he stumbles in life because he doesn't have light. 
Haleluya. Ushaiona mtu ambaye haoni akitembea anatumia kijiti. But there are times he stumbles. Bwana Yesu apa sifa. And that is why a lot of the non born again people have afflictions. Wako na wanapitia machungu katika maisha yao. They suffer a lot of afflictions is because in life have you ever seen somebody grappling in life? Yaani usio na mtu ambaye eh ana maisha tu anatembea hivi hivi. Haoni vizuri. Unajaribu hii ndoa hai make una, inavunjika unatoka unaingia ndoa ingine hai make unavunjika sijakuja kuhukumu mtu i'm trying to explain to you so that you see haleluya because hawana mwanga they don't have the light the bible says in the book of john chapter 3 that jesus is the light yesu ndiye mwanga wa binadamu yesu ndiye mwanga wa binadamu the bible says jesus is the light of man ndipo sakiingia katika maisha ya binadamu binadamu anaanza kuona vizuri pasipo Yesu awoni inakuwa trial and error all the time wanajaribu kwa maisha hebu tujaribu hii ndoa hebu tujaribu hii that is not how god created man to live bwana Yesu apa sifa na hali ya huyu ambaye hajaokoka he cannot experience the goodness of god life is tough life is tough for them mimi huwa nahubiri sana hata kwa slums where darkness is stiff My God, how watu hawana furaha. Hawana furaha. Never envy the person who is not saved. Hawajui vile tunasikianga tukiinua mikono tukimwabudu Mungu. You feel the love of God. You feel the life of God. Unapoinua mikono kumwabudu Bwana, unasikia upendo wake. Unasikia tumaini. You receive an assurance to continue with life. Hao hawana. Wana depend na hao wenyewe. They depend on themselves. Bwana Yesu apa sifa. There is a lot of affliction for the one who doesn't know God there is a lot of affliction bwana yesu apa sifa the bible says in the book of matthew chapter 9 verse 36 mother sura ya 9 mstari wa 39 the bible says but when he saw the multitudes he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd and he said to his disciples the harvest is truly plentiful ya kwamba alipoona watu umati wa watu alisukumwa na huruma alisukumwa na upendo alisukumwa na nia ya kubadilisha vile walivyokuwa na nasema kwamba na kaona walikuwa kama kondoo bila mchungaji yule ambaye hako ndani ya Kristo ako katika hiyo hali hana mchungaji hana mtu wa kuongoza maisha yake and that is why you find so many of them making the mistakes they do by the way when you understand this you will not judge them you will bring them into the kingdom praise the mighty name of jesus so solution ni nini solution ni msalaba wa kristo i know i have 15 minutes left let me take this quickly hallelujah because let me tell you hakuna solution nyingine don't wait for another solution usikoje hakuna solution nyingine unajua squeeze nasikia we, we, we are mellowing to religion mimi nenda church niko sawa Mm-mm. please is not even about religion hakuna dini yote mungu amejiambatanisha nayo hii kitu sio dini the solution is one the solution is the cross of jesus christ period yani suluhisho la mwenye thambi ama yule ambaye hajui mungu suluhisho ni yesu hakuna suluhisho lingine there is no other solution bwana yesu apa sifa mbona hakuna suluhisho the bible says binadamu aliuzwa kwa soko la thambi i'm being very brief Romans chapter 5. Tuliuzwa kwa soko la thambi verse 12. The Bible says from one man sin came into the world. Kutokana na binadamu mmoja thambi iliingia duniani. Na thambi ikasambaa kwa kila binadamu. Na kila binadamu akaunga katika thambi. Bwana Yesu apa sifa. And then the Bible says again Romans 3:23. For all have sinned. Kila binadamu ameanguka kwa thambi na ametoka kutoka utukufu wa Mungu. Bwana Yesu apa sifa. So if we have all sinned, kama sote tumeanguka, usaidizi wetu utatoka wapi? Because you cannot go to heaven in your merit. Hawezi ukaona bingu na wewe, yani my God, merit ni ina Kiswahili. Hiyo. Eh? You cannot go before God with your merit. Eh? Mambo yako, credentials zako. No. Every man as far as God is concerned has fallen. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Malipo ya dhambi ni nini? Ni mauti. But Mungu sababu alipenda binadamu akamtuma Kristo. 
Na Kristo akisulubua msalabani kumbe analipa gharama ya dhambi zetu. He was paying the price for our sins. Kwa nini? Ili mimi na wewe tukubalike mbele za Mungu. The Bible says man shall not be justified by anything else apart from faith in Jesus Christ. Yaani binadamu hata ondolewa hukumu ya kifo kwa njia nyingine isipokuwa kuamini Yesu Kristo na kazi ya msalaba. That is why Paul alisema kwamba hakutumwa abatize. Alitumwa ubiri njili ya msalaba wa Kristo. Hakuihubiri na maneno mazuri ama maneno matamu. Lest the cross of Christ be emptied off of its power. The power is the cross. Maybe you're struggling with drugs. Whatever your struggle is, the power is the cross of Jesus. So Yesu ndiye suluhisho. There is no wishy washy. Hakuna katikati kitu hakuna katikati. Nilikuwa naongelesha mtu akaniambia mimi najua nitaenda mbinguni. Umeanza kwa nini? Akaniambia mimi sikwangi mbaya sana. Sifanyangi hizo dhambi kubwa. Kuna dhambi kubwa kweli? Haleluya. Kuna dhambi kubwa. Na dhambi ndogo bonus so of sifa. The Bible says we are disqualified every human being apart from Jesus. Sababu Yesu alilipa nini? Karama. Alilipa gharama pale msalabani ili wewe ukubalike mbele ya Mungu. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 he says now we have peace with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I have 10 minutes naenda vizuri tu. Naenda kukamilisha sasa. So what is at stake? What is at stake? Mbona tuna, tuna, tunaitwa tufanye hii kazi? I'll give you my personal testimony. Nakumbuka wakati ambapo Mungu aliniita niwe mhubiri. Nilikuwa nimeenda maombi in one of the prayer mountains. Na nilipoingia katika hiyo mlima kuingia tu hivi there was a vision in front of me whether my eyes were closed whether they were open yani macho yangu ilikuwa ilikuwa imefungwa ama imefunguliwa nikilala nimeamka niliona kitu kimoja tu niliona picha moja tu naona watu wanaelekea na umati mkubwa wanaelekea na malaini na malaini kwa malaini na malaini ya mamilioni na wanaelekea pahali so hiyo kitu ikawa inanisumbua nikauliza Mungu au watu wanaelekea wapi then he answered me he told me they are going to hell and they don't have an option Yaani wanaenda kusimu na hawana njia nyingine they don't have an option. Manake walikuwa wamezingirwa na kuta refu sana they had they were surrounded by very tall walls. They couldn't jump out. Na watu walikuwa wanaenda wanaelekea tu hapo. Mungu akaniambia hiyo siku akaninani akaniambia give them an option. Wapatie. Waambie kuna uhai na kifo. Give them an option. Bwana Yesu apesifa. When you speak to that person, unapoongelesha huyo mtu, unampatia option. Let them not go to damnation because they don't have an option. Usikubali waende waangamie sababu hawana option. Because the thing about God's word is it cannot be bent. Always you can bend neno la Mungu sio kama binadamu. The Bible says he doesn't change, he can't. Let me tell you God cannot compromise the integrity of his word. Mungu hawezi akabadilisha neno lake. Akabadilisha hata nyota zitaanza kuanguka ardhi. The Bible says he upholds everything by the power of his word. He has to keep his integrity for every to rem- everything to remain intact. Mungu hawezi akakompromise. Hata compromise kidogo aseme kwamba ah mama yako alikuwa ameokoka wewe ingia binguni. It doesn't go like that. Haienda give you. You make the decision yourself. Bwana Yesu apee sifa. There's a journalist alikuwa anaitwa Matthew Paris. He wasn't even born again by the way he was an atheist. Lakini akaamua afuatilize hii mambo ya wokovu. This thing about salvation and Jesus what is it all about akasema afuatilize akachukua biblia akaanza kuisoma alipoisoma akaandika article na pale katika gazeti akasema ya kwamba kama kile kimeandikwa kwa biblia ni ukweli na ningekuwa mkristo ningeacha kila kitu ningechukua hiyo biblia nihubiri mpaka mwisho wa ardhi he believed the message I'm asking you who is here how much do you believe the message because if you believe the message you will share it with somebody Kama unaamini ujumbe utaambia watu juu yao Bwana Yesu apee sifa you will share the message Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 20 Luka 10 mstari wa 20 Neno la Mungu linasema ya kwamba hii ni wakati ambapo alikuwa ametuma wafuasi wake waende wakahubiri njili Jerusalem Aliwaambia go to the uh, go to Jerusalem And only in Jerusalem. Let me, let me just read it. Anasema ya kwamba So waliporudi wafuasi wake wakamwambia, "Hey, Yesu, mapepo yanatoweka because he told them wale wagonjwa ebu waponye. 
So aka uliporudi wakamwambia yeye Yesu excited over scorpions and of all the power of the enemy nothing shall by any means harm you lakini akawaambia kitu cha ajabu akawaambia nevertheless yani baada ya hayo mambo yote msifurahie sababu shetani ama the spirits are subject to you msifurahie sababu mabebo yanaondoka ukiyakemea akasema ya kwamba things are written in heaven furahieni sababu majina yenu yameandikwa wapi mbinguni Bwana Yesu ape sifa. Hallelujah. And lastly, what is at stake? Actually second last. 